So might be another place where you could add another bedroom to increase the value of the home there and fill in that space, or you can just forego it altogether. So about a year ago, we, maybe a little late to the game, but started to get worried about the increases in sales prices that we had seen on our traditional floor plans and decided to go down the path of a more attainable lineup to sell alongside our traditional lineup. So at the bottom right, you can see our typical roof structure, pretty complicated and now the new style that we're going towards, at least as a supplement to what we're already selling, much simpler, and we'll see some slides on a little bit on, on the floor plans. You'll see it has the same room count, some of the same features that our typical homes do, but a lot more efficient to build, fewer corners, simpler roof. And do your consumers, are they like, no, I really, that, that roof's just not doing it no, for they've, me? No, they've never seen it from the top, so they don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Another example would be the window schedule. Traditional lineup, lots of different windows, very hard, especially in supply chain crisis times like we're in right now. On the left, the new lineup, and I want to get even better on that. I want to go away from mold windows as we're refining the plans over time. Just as I've talked to our suppliers, you know, if we can get them down to five or six window types, they'll stock them for us. We won't have these lead time issues that we're having right now. They could never possibly stock the window schedule on the right and keep us moving. Can you talk a little bit about the process that it took for you to get from your traditional line to your attainable? Is there, was there like a, everybody in the same room and let's start cutting corners or was there a design review process? Like how did you do that? Because that's amazing. That's, that's a pretty significant reduction. Well, in this instance, we started with a blank sheet of paper to come up with a couple of new plans. We had yeah. some design criteria to it, but we could do the same thing with the traditional line and we're planning to in the next year to really sit down in a room, okay, where can we take away a corner without compromising on design or function? And where can we eliminate some windows that we don't really need to be different size throughout the house? I'm impressed, that's pretty cool. So here's an example of one of those. We have two that are fully developed now. They start as one car garages. Uh, the task to the product development team was to come up with something that has the same attributes as our very popular legacy collection, but is a lot more efficient to build and comes in a little smaller square footage because a lot of our buyers are single. They're either widowed or just single, divorced. 
and they don't need all the space. So two bedrooms for them is plenty. Uh, they, oftentimes they don't even need a den, but we do have the option for that in some pocket areas. And they all have a two car garage option for people that want two car garages. So the idea was to go from our typical 42 foot width product down to 28 in a one car garage or 35 with the two car garage option. And it's allowed us to get our base prices down by about $50,000. 50,000. Then here's the other one, the larger one, the Rockaway. So one is at 1,300 square feet, 1,400 square feet. Um, just very efficient, but still maintains all the, the things that we think make us special, the private outdoor courtyards and the two bedrooms on the main level for our 55 plus buyer. So the $50,000, is that really helping you reach new buyers because you're getting to a better price point? Or are they then spending that on upgrades, interiors, finishes, something of that nature? They're still loading them up, but it allows us to tap into a broader pool of buyers because we had seen our, our prices, when I started with the company about four years ago, average prices were about 350,000. We've crept up over 450 now on the traditional lineup. And this allows us to get back down in the high threes in our markets. All right, number six, neighborhood densities will increase. We've heard it from multiple different sources um, and it's going to happen all over the country. It's not in the traditional markets where you think of being dense markets. Whatever you consider to be dense in your current market, it's going to get more dense. Um, and we're seeing that in the production environment that 62% of architects that work in the production home side are currently designing or working on projects that are in a higher, um, more dense than they were the previous year. And in order to do this, you can, yes, just create a new product, but you also have to think about three things. One is privacy, two is outdoor space, and three is storage. So if your home's gonna get a little bit smaller, you're gonna have to think about the storage and where is everything gonna be stored and how's it gonna be tucked away and how are people not gonna have that visual clutter that they're trying to avoid because they already have so much other chaos in their life. If you're thinking about outdoor space and the lot's getting smaller, it's gotta be a little bit more thoughtful. I love the side courtyard. It's a brilliant, brilliant solution. Um, and then privacy. So how do I not necessarily, I'm, you know, in my bathroom and my neighbors can see in, or I'm washing dishes and I have to wave at my neighbor. There's a, there's a story that we have in one of our podcasts where somebody goes, yeah, I have my window and then I'm, it's in front of my kitchen sink and my neighbors also has a picture window in front of their kitchen sink. And one night I'm washing the dishes, you know, they're finishing dinner around the same time we are. And I wave to my neighbor and they pull the shade down. <laughs> and I was like, well, what does that tell you? It tells you that some people are very comfortable waving at their neighbors while washing their sinks, but more likely than not, People don't want people staring into their home while they're washing their dishes or doing whatever else they're doing in their evening routine. So thinking about those things and window adjacencies. So this is something that we've been really focused on, just also in response to the increased cost. How can we get more density? And one interesting thing that I've heard from our land people is cities are actually starting to ask for this. They recognize the need for it as well. Recent example in our Raleigh operation, City of Durham actually asked us, is there anything that you can do to increase the density on this site? And I can't remember the last time a municipality said that to a builder, but it is happening right now. So the traditional plan collection that we have that we've built for about 15 years now gets about three to three and a half units per acre. And that is, as Deanna said, all relative to the market. Uh, some of the Texas builders in our system can get it up to six in some ways. Um, but we've gone back to doing some attached product in the form of four unit townhomes. If we were to do an entire community of that, that would get us to six units per acre in most of our markets. And then with the new attainable line that I talked about, if we did an entire project of that with the two car garage option, assuming that's gonna be the one that sells more, that would be four and a half units an acre. So we now have three different lines in our arsenal we can take in and go to a project and design it as kind of a mixed lot sizes and increase the overall density. Were they trying to meet some sort of requirement in Raleigh? I'm so curious. Uh, they, they just wanted some lower price, smaller houses, and increased density. So they, they get All it. All right, Raleigh. 
So here's an example of where we've done this. This is also in the Raleigh market. So we have three different lot sizes in this community. We have 86 home sites with 52 foot wide lots for our legacy product, uh, 78 where we're doing the attainable product, and then 28 four unit townhome buildings. So versus in Raleigh where there's topography issues obviously and more stormwater requirements, we were under three units an acre typically in our projects there. Uh, this one gets us over four units per acre, even on a site that has uh, 